Okay, Linda. Uh, isn't he cute? <laughs> yeah. Mom, look. Um. Mom, where's yeah. the rest of my bicycle top? Oh, uh, look on the workbench in the basement. But I already did. Well, look again, Bill, at the back. It's that little needle thingamajig you're looking for. That's it. Yeah. Where's yeah. mine? Yeah. All around. I gotta talk to you. Are you ready to go? Uh, serious? Yeah, mine is. Well, then I have time to talk, David. Uh, but in just a minute, huh? Uh, yes, dear, coming. He's right down. Yes, Honey, dear. can you get this thing in? Uh huh. Oh, I wish we were poor again. Fine thing. No, I do. I mean it. If you were the vice president, we could stay home with the children. We could avoid being poisoned by those deadly martinis of Mr. Haviland's. Now, honey, you must remember to call him George. Oh, I can't. I just can't. It's like giving God a nickname. Mother! In a minute, dear. I wouldn't say George is godly. No, indeed he isn't. He's just about as powerful, if you can believe everything he claims. <laughs> you Mother. got something there. Uh, in a minute, sweetheart. Hey, we hadn't better be late. Uh, I'm already. Uh, and listen, uh, wear your plain black tie. Not that monstrosity you brought home from the office party. I don't care who gave it to you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that child. What is it? Keep yourself. Oh. <laughs> she looks like an angel sleeping on a cloud. Yeah, well, I wish she'd act more like one. Mom, before when I tried to get her to take a nap, she said she couldn't because she might miss Santa. Yeah. Week after Christmas, and she's still waiting to see Santa. <laughs> Oh, Mother, why don't you tell her? Oh, honey, she'll learn soon enough. Well, wouldn't you know she'd fall asleep ten minutes before she's due to get up? Mm-hmm. Well, we'll just let her sleep. But, Mother, it, it's 5 30. Get your shoes. If we let her sleep now, she'll never get to bed tonight. Oh, I can hear her now. Mother, whatever in the world did you make me take a nap for? Well, that child. Will you stop crabbing about your sister and go ahead and finish dressing? Mm hmm uh, Linda, remember, when your new date gets here, your father and I'd like to meet him. You mean look him over. Oh, Mother, must you be so antiquated? Well, save my life. I can't see anything antiquated about that. Huh. Oh, uh, dear, should we go into your room? Fine. I knew you and Dad were worried because I didn't belong. That's why I went out for basketball this year. It was my own decision, Ma. I didn't do it because Dad was all state when he was in school. No, well, just the same. Your dad was very pleased. Mm, I know. Honey, if you've been cut from the team, it's no disgrace. You're only a sophomore, you know. I haven't been cut, Ma. The coach wants me to play on the A squad. Well, that's wonderful. Well, then what's wrong? I hate basketball. You what? Oh, I know it sounds crazy. Any other kid would want to make the A squad. Only I think basketball's dumb. Well, maybe it wasn't in Dad's day. I guess then, if you were short but a real good shot, you had a chance. Now it's just, who's the tallest goon? That's the only reason the coach wants me, Ma. I'm the tallest goon. Oh, now, honey. Oh, another thing. I thought athletics was supposed to teach you sportsmanship. That's a lot of bunk, Ma. The big thing in basketball is to be rough on the backboards. Come down with your elbows flying. Gouge the other guy in the eye a couple of times and he'll respect you. Get that old killer instinct, the coach tells me. I was going ahead and play just to make Dad happy. Only now, there's something I really want to do. But what is it? Well, there's this Norman Prescott. And he's a brain and a real good guy. Uh -huh. And he's editor of the school paper. Well, I wrote a story in journalism class, and Norm read it and thought it was real good. good. So he wants me to work on the paper. And I really like journalism. I'd like to be a reporter. Well, then go ahead and do it. Hmm, it's not that simple. Coach and the team and everybody in school would think I'm chicken. They'd say I let the school down. Oh. Boy, I'm not popular now, but if I did that, nobody would speak to me. Don't you see, Ma? Well, uh... Would you be letting the school down? Well, no. There's this other guy. He's only two inches shorter than me. Uh -huh. He wants to make the A-squad something awful. And he's got that killer instinct. If the coach would only give him a chance, he'd be twice as good as me. Um, but do you have to decide right away? Yeah. Oh. We start practice again right after vacation. 
I ought to phone the coach tonight. Well, it is a difficult decision to make, but it must be yours, David. Personally, I, I, I don't think you'd beat Chicken. I think it would take a great deal of courage to do what you want to do. Look, why don't you talk it over with Dad? Oh, I know what he'd think. Oh, come on now. Give him credit for being fair. No, not when it comes to basketball, Ma. He's been talking about watching me play since I was in the fifth grade. Well, you remember, he used to measure me every month. He was so scared I wouldn't be tall. Well, he'll think I'm chicken, too. Oh, he won't say it. He'll just think it. Well, perhaps I should talk to him first, sort of prepare the way. Huh? No, I'm no baby, Ma. I'll phone the coach, and then I'll tell Dad. Are you sure you can take the consequences? You know how you worry about things. Yeah. But I gotta get over that. I'm proud of you. Heck, you're prejudiced. Well, yes, maybe I am, but if you know inside that you've done the right thing, it won't matter what anyone else thinks. Madge, come on, we'll be late. I've got to go. Father be absolutely furious that we're late. Uh, David, I'm leaving you in charge, dear. Now, Patty's in bed taking your nap, and Bill's in the basement. And... Oh, honey, are you leaving now? Oh, yes, we are, honey. Well, my date's not here yet. Oh, I'm so sorry. We just can't keep the Havilands waiting, you know. Well, honey, you can meet him when he brings me home. Yeah. Uh, honey, uh, we're supposed to be home for dinner, but you know how Mr. Havilland is. And if he insists that we stay there for dinner, then there's a casserole all ready to be put into the oven, okay? Yeah, okay. Mom, have a good time. Yes, I will, sweetheart. Ma, can't you tell Mr. Havilland you want to come home for dinner? Well... It's New Year's Eve. I mean, even if Linda is going out, well, couldn't the rest of us be together? You know, oh, like always. I know just what you mean, David. We'll try to get back. But if we can't, remember now, put the oven up to 400 degrees before you put that casserole in. Goodbye, sweetheart. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, Mom. About to dispatch a small cavalry troop. I'm sorry. I had to give David babysitting instructions. I'm so good about it. I hate imposing on him, though. You know, uh, he has things on his mind. That kid he'll have ulcers before he's 20. <laughs> yes, but he's no ordinary boy, you know. Somehow or other, he was built from a different mold than the others, I think. Well, he's certainly built to play basketball. Did I say something wrong? No. <sighs> Wish Linda's date had gotten there before we left. Well, he didn't. Kids these days have no sense of time. Hey! You guys celebrating early. Mm, obviously. <laughs> Just for a change. Could there possibly be anyone else there tonight besides the big brass of the Haviland firm? <laughs> Fat chance. Maybe you could hide the kids since Mr. Haviland objects to people having them, hmm? Oh, Madge. Well, you know, darling, I am at a distinct disadvantage. Whenever we're around the Havilands, nobody even mentions children. And I don't seem to have anything else to talk about, so I just sit there like a goo. To a childless couple like the Havilands, it must be very boring to hear people bragging about their offspring. I never brag. I boast. <laughs> I just boast a little bit tonight. No, Madge. Madge, I believe George's the kind that just can't tolerate being crossed. So we'll try not to cross him. Mm -hmm. Remember all the wonderful things he's made possible for us, honey. Mm -hmm. Like our new home, college for the kids. Oh, I'll remember, and I'll behave. Look at me, I'm even wearing the uniform, hmm? <laughs> it's awful special on you, honey. Kurt. Hmm? Let's be home for dinner. Sure, honey. Unless George has other plans. Trump. Do you expect us Oh, all this talk is such nonsense. Who cares? 
wonder what George is talking about. Business, of course. Strange how little anyone knows about George Haviland. All we know is that he moved to our city right after the end of World War II, purchased a rundown factory, and built it into a fabulously successful business. Period. Oh, I hate all this. I believe George is a kind that just can't tolerate being crossed. So we've got to try not to cross him. Can't you just tell Mr. Haviland you want to come home for dinner? It's New Year's Eve, Ma. I, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Haviland, but I, I'm afraid Kurt and I have to be leaving. Uh, thank you very much, Mrs. Haviland, for asking us. Uh, good night. Good night. Madge? What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Oh, wait a minute. Now, you can't get away as easily as this. It just occurred to me that a merry old crowd like ours ought to go out to dinner. I'll take you to Pasta Lounge, Madge. Buy one of those fabulous cocktails. It sounds delightful, but really, we must get home. Aren't you feeling well, my dear? He's giving me an out. All I have to do is say yes, I feel ill. What was it I said to David this very evening? If you know inside you've done the right thing, it won't matter what anyone else thinks. Okay, David, here goes. Uh, no, I feel very well. But it's New Year's, and I want to be with our children. We have so few years with our children. Well, holidays are so important to a family that I... My dear. Well, Don't let this throw you, Kurt. You're a good engineer. This isn't the only company in the world, you know. Oh, yes, thank you. Good, good night, Mr. Good night, Mary. Good night. You didn't say anything that would upset a normal person. Oh, Kurt. George must be off his rocker to get so angry at such a thing. <laughs> He won't fire you, will he? Maybe you'll have forgotten the whole thing by tomorrow. Oh. already been here and you know it. He brought you all your lovely toys. But I didn't see him. I wanted to see him. Oh, sweetie. How did you get the candles, Patty? I set it up and tried to reach them in your bedroom. And these? Matches. I got them out of Daddy's pocket. Patty, I've told you a hundred times not to play with matches. Daddy, whatever in the world made you blow off the candles? They were so pretty. All right, Marge, I'll handle this. What's the matter, Ma? Oh, I heard you running. Hi, honey. Well, Patty got some candles out of our room, and she put them on the windowsill and lighted them right under the curtains. Oh, we checked in her room a few minutes ago, Ma. She was still asleep. I know. Well, is she all right? Ow! Oh, I'm sorry, Daddy. She will be. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Mom. All right, honey. Oh. Hello. Hello. Who are you? Oh, Norman Prescott, my mother. Oh, how do you do, Norman? Gee, I feel awful about Patty, Mrs. Lindsay. We were in the kitchen working on the next issue of the school paper. Yes. But we were listening for any sound. Well, there's that... no harm done, fortunately, Norman. I'll bet Patty thinks different. Poor kid. It's my fault. No, David, it is not your fault. <sighs> Norman, do you play bridge? No. I wish I did. Good. Then you stay for dinner. Bridge lessons will start immediately thereafter. Thanks, I will. Mm. It's too bad Linda isn't here, because she could begin to learn, too. Hmm? Oh, I'm here, Mother. 
Oh, honey. What happened to your date? Uh, he didn't come. Oh. Well, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. Oh, don't be so upset, Mother. I didn't want to date Brad anyway. I guess I was just flattered when he asked me. Oh. He always dates such well, sophisticated girls. <laughs> well, personally, I'm glad you're home. Now, how about you and Norm coming on in the kitchen with me? David wants to talk to his father. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'll wait till tomorrow. Now, you listen to me. Tonight, I thought of how brave you were to do what you wanted, and that gave me courage to tell Mr. Haviland I wanted to come home. But it probably cost your father his job. Oh, my, you shouldn't have done that. Oh, yes, I should have. Now, you march right upstairs and tell your father. Tell me what? I'll be in the kitchen. No, don't go, honey. Tell me what. Well, I quit the team. This is quite a surprise. I want to work on the school paper, Dad. Well, I want to be a reporter, and I wouldn't have time to do both. I mean, work on the paper and practice basketball. Did I say a surprise? I meant a shock. This brings up the possibility that you might just have a brain, David. Oh, gee, Dad, thanks. Thanks. Uh, well, I'll let you two talk this whole thing over. All right, David. Sit down. Let's have all the particulars. Where's the casserole? Oh, gee, I don't know, Mom. It wasn't a refrigerator. Well, it's not now. Why, we are hungry. Yeah, you also ate it cold. Sure, it was good. Real good. Thanks for the dinner, Miss Lindsay. Okay. Don't mention it, Joey. Sam, where'd you put that bottle of champagne we got for Christmas? Oh. I stashed it away. Well, unstash it. It's New Year's Eve. I certainly will. Champagne, Linda, is that your date honking out there? <sighs> Look at that. Yes, that is fun. If you want me to go out and tell him you're, you're not going to go? Uh, oh, no, Norm. No, it's the rule of the house that uh, the dates have to come to the door. Okay. Gee, Dad, I think he's been drinking. You what? Huh. Here. Kurt, he's right. He has been drinking. And you go right out there and tell him to leave. Oh, no, Dad, I'll tell him. Linda, wait a minute. Oh, Kurt, Kurt, no. Uh, let her handle it. Fine, but I don't intend for that boy to get behind the wheel of that car until he sobers up. All right, dear. Well, what's the matter, Ma? You look kind of pale. All right, honey. Well, how would you fellows like scrambled eggs and bacon for dinner, huh? Sounds great. Well, Good. Well? Young Bud's gone for a nice, long walk. Oh, thank heaven. I'm certainly glad you were home. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had the nerve to tell him off. I'd probably have gone along. Linda, a smart girl like you would never in the world have gone out with that boy. I don't know, Dad. Well, now, could we possibly eat before something else happens? <laughs> we certainly can. Scrambled eggs coming up. Come on, Linda. <sighs> Boy, it's positively dynamic around here. Our house is so calm. Dad's a professor and Mom writes uh, book reviews. I'm the only offspring. You know, about the only thing that ever happens is somebody turns a page. Well, the excitement's over now, I can assure you. Matt! What? The Havilands. They just drove into the driveway. Oh, Kurt. He wouldn't come here to fire you, would he? Look, I better take a rain check on that bridge lesson. Goodbye, everybody. Yes, goodbye, Norman. Well, I'll, I'll answer the door. Hey, what's that yelling about? What's the matter? Come in. 
These are my children, George. This is Linda. How do you do? Linda's a senior in high school. This is David. How do you do, sir? David's only a sophomore, but already a reporter on the school paper. And this is Bill. How do you do, sir? David. He's a big boy. My son was a reporter, too. I, did, I didn't know you had a son. Yes. You wouldn't have heard about him. I haven't mentioned his name in 15 years. During the war, he was sent overseas and didn't come back. I couldn't face the loss of him. I wouldn't. So I closed my heart to everything that might remind me of Edward, such as Christmas, New Year's, and children. Until tonight, Madge, when you said what you did about us having so few years to give to our children and how important holidays are in the family. We had Edward for 22 Christmases, but there were so few, and they went so fast. When you said what you did, Madge, all the anger, the bitterness, the grief, everything just hit me like a ton of bricks. I had to leave. So sorry. You needn't be. You see, I sort of have Edward back again. In a way. Well, you wouldn't have dinner with us, so we've come over to eat with you, and I hope it's all right. Well, that's just wonderful. I'm sorry Billy ate our entire dinner. I hope you like scrambled eggs. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Let me have your coat, Mrs. Havilah. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Here, David. Put that away, dear. You have another child, haven't you? Yes. Uh, you'll meet her later. Won't you come over here? Come on in. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's beautiful. Happy New Year. Well, thank you, but why should a pretty young thing like you want to kiss an old goat like me? And you asked for it, George. You're standing right under the mistletoe. But... <laughs> <laughs> What do you know? May I? Thank you. <laughs> Mommy! Mommy! He's here. I heard him. He's here. I heard that old Sarah laughing. I told you he would come so I could see him. Darling, so you did. Well, Sarah, what do you think of this? Oh, whatever in the world did you do with your whiskers? Oh, <laughs> Thank you, John. This above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day, thou canst not then be false to any man. Oh, good night. And we'll see you next week.